Hi, welcome to another example on shear moment diagrams. Here we have a cantilevered beam off of a fixed end, and we have a distributed load of five newtons per meter acting downward uniformly across this entire span A, B, and the length of the span is 12 meters. So just like before, we wanna draw our free body diagram first, and that is what's gonna help us get our shears and our moments. So there is our free body diagram. We have our uniformly distributed load here, five newtons per meter. A 12 meter length and then here at A since we had a fixed support we know that fixed supports support a vertical reaction a Y a horizontal reaction a X and a bending moment which I will call M a so to make this problem a little easier I'm actually going to resolve this distributed load into an equivalent point load that acts right at the center of this beam I'll just call it P and P will equal our W times L, and that's equal to five Newton per meter times 12 meters, and that is 60 Newtons acting down. So this is 60 Newtons, and we're just gonna use this resolved force to come up with our reactions, AY, AX, and MA. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do the easiest one first. Sum of forces in the X direction is zero, to the right is positive. So we just have our AX force here. It's pretty lonely, I feel bad for it, but hey. AX, there's no other forces, so this is going to be equal to zero. And then we have our sum of forces in the Y direction. We can do that, sum of forces in the Y direction equals zero. Going up is positive, so we have this positive AY here, right? And then this minus 60 Newtons here, Newtons, and that is equal to zero. Well, AY is equal to 60 Newtons. Okay, how about our moment? Well, if I did sum of moments about point A is equal to zero, and I said counterclockwise was positive, then I would have our positive MA, right? This reaction here minus this 60 Newtons because that is going to create a clockwise moment, right? The 60 Newtons is gonna create a clockwise moment about A. So 60 Newton times the moment arm from A to that resultant. So this is halfway between A and B. So it's at a distance of six meters. That is equal to zero. Well, if I do the math, MA is equal to 360 Newton meters. So there is MA, here's AY, and here is our lonely AX. So now that we have our reactions, we can go ahead and start drawing the shear diagram right here. So our units are going to be in Newtons. And before we actually get into figuring out what those values are for the shear diagram, remember we wanna take note of our positive internal shear and moment sign convention. So if we have a portion of a beam here, on the right side our shear should be going down and on the left it should be going up. So this is positive shear for this tiny, tiny little element. And on the ends we should be creating a moment and a moment that bends the beam back. And then here's a new thing, if we have any external load applied, so let's just say we have this random distributed load applied to this portion of the beam or structural element, going up would be positive. So our x-axis would be this way and our y-axis would be that way. So any external load is positive when it's going up, our shear on the right is going down and that's positive, and our moments are creating this smiley face beam and that would be positive sign convention for shear moment and external loads. So what is the shear right here at point A? Well, if we take a tiny little cut at point A and we draw that beam segment out, so I'm just gonna draw it right here. Here's point A, here is our AY reaction, which is 60 Newtons. And then we have this tiny, very, very tiny amount of this five Newton per meter distributed load here. And then we would draw our internal shear going down. Here is our moment and there is our external moment there. And then AX is zero, so I'm not gonna include that here. Well, if I did the sum of forces in the Y direction, we can use that to figure out what the shear is at point A. Sum of forces in the Y direction equals zero. Going up is positive. I have this 60 Newtons going up. And then we wanna look at this distributed load. Well, remember, whenever we're trying to figure out what the shear is to the left and to the right of a certain joint or any other location, 
we're only taking a very, very tiny cut just to the right of A. This distance right here is infinitesimally small. It is incredibly small. So this five Newton meter times this distance, which is basically zero, would not have any effect on the shear here at this point, just to the right side of A. So then we have our shear force going down and that is equal to zero. And if I add 60 or, and if I add V to both sides, I get the shear right at point A is 60 Newtons. So I can come to the shear diagram and draw 60 Newtons of shear right there. And it goes straight up. And the shear here is zero, just to the left of A, right? Great, so what's happening on the rest of the shear diagram? Well, since our loading is pretty consistent, it is uniformly distributed load, the value of that load is constant, and we know our shear diagram is going to be linear. So what this loading is saying is that every meter we move to the right, we're gonna push the shear down by five. So one meter to the right, this is one meter. Our shear is gonna be 55, right, 55. And then if we go another meter over, that's gonna be 50. And we'll continue until we get all the way down here to zero. And notice that I did not include this P force here in the shear diagram. And that was because we just resolved this distributed load just to figure out what the external reactions are. The internal shear should always be done using the actual external loading and the actual external reactions. So cool, here is our shear diagram. This is a positive shear because it's above the x-axis. And if we wanted to figure out what our shear was at any point on this diagram, let's say halfway, so this would be a distance of, let's see, 12 divided by two is six, I can do math. And what we can actually do is take a cut right at half point and look at one side of the beam and figure out what our shear is. So in other words, if I took a cut and I looked at this portion of the beam, so half of the beam, I have this A here, I have this vertical reaction of 60 Newtons, and then I have this distributed load here of five Newton per meter. And then finally I have this cut here, which is our shear. This is six meters. And we can use this diagram to come up with our shear at six meters from point A. So if I took the sum of forces in the y direction and set that equal to zero, then I would have this 60 Newtons going up minus five Newton per meter times six meters and then minus V is equal to zero. Well, 60 Newtons minus five times six is 30, minus V is equal to zero, and if I did the math, V would equal 30 Newtons. So the shear right at six meters is 30 Newtons. Cool, so we have our shear diagram. In the next part, we'll actually go ahead and draw our moment diagram.